Good afternoon, or good evening. So I'm Felix, and I'm the one who keeps you away from the beer now for 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to spend uh, the next 45 minutes talking about how to keep your OpenBSD systems up to date. And because that alone is a bit not enough, I'm going to present some work I've been working on in the last few months that actually make it really nice to keep your systems up to date and help you a lot. Um, so we're going to have a short OpenBSD introduction. How many people actually use OpenBSD here? So how many know OpenBSD? Okay, so that's a fair share. Um, so I'm going to give a short two-minute introduction to OpenBSD. Then I'm going to explain the traditional way of keeping your systems up to date, the way we propagate it in the FAQ. And then I'm going to leave the traditional way and I'm um, going to present bin patch ng. And um, last but not least, a way to distribute the patches. Um, OpenBSD is a free Unix-style operating system based on 4.4 BSD Lite. It was founded by Theo in '95, and we are the ones with OpenSSH and the Blowfish and the cool artwork, and um, like it a lot. And of course, we um, like free licenses. That's something we really work a lot on lately in the last few years. We are focused to develop a simple, secure operating system. We love good crypto, um, proper privileged separated demons, and the clean design. System is completely buildable from source, which is something that is quite important in the course of the talk. And we make two releases per year, and we support the last two releases with security updates. And all the rest you can basically find on openbsd.org. So how do we keep your OpenBSD system secure? Um, when we find a security issue or a, a RADA, we put it into the so-called stable branch and also release patch files over FTP. And that basically means for you as an admin or as a user, you have to have a source tree on your machine. You grab the patch from the FTP site and you apply the patch, rebuild the components that needs to be rebuilt, and um, if you have more than one machine, you then jump to the next machine and do the same over. It can be a bit easier if you have a bigger environment. You can do things like have your source on NFS, so you only need to apply the patch once. You can have object on NFS, which is only shared then between one specific architecture. You could also tar up the rebuilt objects and untarm on the target, or share your root file system over NFS, again, only for a certain architecture then. That's all not the best way to do it, I think. And um, for the people that don't know how we distribute our patches, this is an example patch file. Uh, you see in the beginning what you have to do. You have to CD to user source, apply the patch, and then you have to do the whole dance of make object, clean gear, depend, etc. And um, once you move from a few couple firewalls to a few more, it becomes quite annoying. And if you have an even larger environment, you move to a few servers, it becomes even more annoying. And uh, once you hit a few hundred workstations, it's a pain in the ass, believe me. And it's just not, it doesn't scale at all. So everyone in the room that does system management stuff probably knows that, of course you can write your own script to SCP something from here to there, or copy something back and there. And of course, you will forget that box that will get wanked the next night. And um, we are all lazy, so we had to fix that. One guy that fixed it in, I think, 2005 was um, Gerardo Santana. He's from Mexico. And he wrote something that is called OpenBSD bin patch. It's highly inspired by our port tree and the makefile voodoo we use there to build stuff. And it's basically just a set of make files that build updates for the OpenBSD core system in a semi-automatic way. Uh, his work can be found on SourceForge, OpenBSD binpatch.sourceforge.net. And in his definition, a bin patch is basically a tar file that has updated files for your server or your machine. He showed his work around back then, and um, some use it, but didn't, like, a lot of people didn't really like it among the OpenBSD developers. I'm not sure why. Even though I belong to the crowd, I have no clue why it was rejected so hard how, as it was. Um, 
The bin patches are built and the resulting file tree that you build in is diffed against an original style set. That's how it works. And that's how you find newer files and that you know, okay, I have to try those up. So from the diff that you generate from these two trees, a so-called plist, a file list is generated and we use that to pipe it into the tarball and have it all there. So then you do on your target machine not all the single steps, but only the untarring of the resulting bin patch, which is already quite nice, but uh, of course it can be improved. It's very simple, but um, ever tried extracting a bin patch for libc made for IC86 on AMD64? It kind of gets you, and um, Wim is up there, he did it, and he didn't like it. Um, and of course it doesn't give you a real patch management. You don't see a patch level, you don't, you don't really know which machine did I patch, because then you're back to comparing timestamps on files. Oh, did I already have that machine or not? Mike Erdely, one of the OpenBSD developers, added a few patches to the work of Gerardo, and I think that was last year, and that actually adds some magic to keep a file up to date, but it's still not nice. And of course, you don't have any way of rolling back your patches. And once you come to a certain amount of machines, you might actually consider rolling back a patch because you see, oh, that went bollocks. Um, we have very cool package tools, mostly written by Mark Espy on OpenBSD. And when Wim had this little incident, I kind of got the idea of, hey, we have to check the architecture for the patch and we have to check a whole lot of other things. So I kind of got the idea because our package tools do all that to use those to do some kind of patch management. For the people that don't know our package tools, OpenBSD packages is our way of distributing third-party applications. We build them from our ports tree. And a package is basically just a gzip tarball that has a bit of special content. It has a file plus contents that is, um, this is all the stuff that is actually in the package, plus file modes, size, MD5, all that and a plus desk that basically contains a description about what the package offers. The package creation is done in the ports tree when you build something and it's done with package create. We always recommend just using packages because all the package routes are these days so good that you don't really need to have your own ports tree on your machine. Package management then is done with package add for adding, package delete for removing and package info for gathering information about the packages on your machine. If there are any questions, I think we are not so many that you can actually raise your hand, or if I'm too fast, or something needs to be explained. Yes. So when I thought about actually creating a better, package man pa pa better patch management for OpenBSD, I kind of had a few goals that I want to have with those. One was that the creation of binary patches was supposed to be as easy as possible with um, Gerardo's bin patch work, you still had to manually download all the OpenBSD install sets for the original file tree. You had to download the source tree, all that. And I thought, well, we can do that even better by just doing it all automatically. It had to be manageable with our package tools. It had to be rollback capable. I wanted to have it the way that I can actually say, okay, I want to roll back all patches and have the exact state back. And I wanted to have it um, with signing capabilities to later actually be able to distribute binary patches that are signed by a good source and um, no changes to the OpenBSD core system. That was one of my main goals when I wrote the stuff. The most reason for that was that I didn't want to bother with dealing with others and having to discuss and I just wanted to make it and be able to release it without a big hassle. It's completely derived from Gerardo's work. Um, and since that, it's a l uh, since that is a lot of make file voodoo, I'm really thankful for him because I really hate make and I can't really handle it well either. So I just had his framework and just thought, okay, I can extend that quite well. Um, it's, using, it's using completely the same make file framework. And um, the way it is now, it is capable of creating the old style bin patches the way Gerardo <laughs> did them and the new style bin patches. It uses completely the power from package create to create something we can feed to package add. Package create is um, a really nice tool. You can feed it a package list and at the end comes out a perfectly packaged. 
Um, and so basically all I did was gluing components together, as always when you do stuff, I guess. Um, the usage stayed exactly the same as in the original bin patch, again, to make it easier for people that use it stuff so far to adapt it. We just do way more in the back end of the framework. Um, so basically, um, if you want to use bin patch ng, you just grab the table from that side, but it's at the end again on the sides, and you extract it, and you have make files for OpenBCD 4.1 through 4.3, and all you actually have to do then to, to build your patch is make patch 001 package, and um, the number 001 comes from the OpenBSD patches. We release our patches with numbers from one through however many we, we actually get throughout the release. Um, and as I mentioned, unlike the original bin patch, bin patch ng will actually take care of everything by itself. Um, I'm going to shortly show you how that looks. Um, basically, you see right here that I said sudo make patch 001 package and it then said okay I don't even have my fake install tree so I'm going to start. Uh, I previously had downloaded all the disk files by with bin patch ng so it finds them, creates the object here, goes through all our install sets, extracts them and then goes through the source tarball, the sys tarball and xenokara and extracts them all and then here it picks up the 001 OpenBSH open patch, which was the first patch we released for 4.3. Uh, it applies it, Hong succeeded, and then it just goes through whatever you do, usually manually builds OpenSSH, and at the end, the end falls out a nice package that you can actually have some install stuff for. Um, and how that works, I'm going to explain now. It actually works. We have an example make file where we list all the patches we have so far. This one comes from OpenBSD 4.2. And um, if you create these make files yourself, you basically use a few macros that we defined in bin patch where you just write the same thing that you had in the patch file that you usually do manually, you just write it there. And we have a few macros like this where you have, if you have a patch that is for the kernel, where you actually say, okay, I just want to rebuild the kernel. So you just say, okay, this is a PF patch, this belongs to the kernel, so I just write underscore kernel and a bin patch will do all the work for you. Um, I can show how that looks in da, da, da. This one is a bit more complete. Can you actually see that? Well, the blue stuff is comments anyways. So, um, so it just lists two patches at the top. These are just a few general macros. And here it looks on the bottom and uh, on the for the most bottom, we include the BSD binge patch MK, which is the real magic behind the whole thing. So, just like the original bin patch, we work with an extracted OpenBSD install, as well as extracted source, because that's what we patch. Source is patched, rebuilt, according to the rules we just showed. And then we iterate over the result finding changed files. Instead of the old bin patch, we don't just simply tar it up, but we create a proper OpenBSD package, and that's the real fun magic. We look for all the files, and then we generate the plist. We have to go through the plist again to see do we have any special modes in the file? Is there anything with an S bit or similar? Because package create is really, really um, picky about these kind of things because it comes from the ports tree where it wants to warn if something is installed with an S bit and not properly noted about it. So I had to hack some Perl magic that actually goes through and shuffles around the plist again and adds all these proper mode lines. Um, the package list then looks like... Uh, let me, uh, there we have it. Then. 
Like this, for anybody who has worked with the OpenBSD port tree, he will notice these statements, group sh agent mode for that file is that. And that's, that's the stuff we added basically to bin patch ng along. And um, what we also say that we don't have any conflicts with other bin patches, otherwise we would have problems with the naming of our patches. What we have on the bottom is we have certain scripts for the rollback. I'm going to explain that in five minutes. And as you can see, we do install in a very weird location. But that also comes now. I'm sorry for switching back and forth to VMware, but um, OpenBSD on this laptop doesn't like beamers. The packages um, look and behave basically like regular OpenBSD packages. We have as a naming bin patch, then the release for OpenBSD, architecture, and the patch number again. The comment is filled in with the OpenBSD name for the patch, basically what OpenBSD has released. And the description of the package is then the full source diff. So you can actually, if you get a bin patch from my site, you can actually see, ah, is it built with the right diff or not? And, and the install root is in var db bin patch patch num. The problem is if you try to install something into slash, you will run into conflicts with um, the package tools because package tools like to keep the MD5 around for old files. And you can't just overwrite system files. So what I thought was, why don't I install in vardb bin patch patch num, and from there, with an own installer script that I ship with every bin patch package, I just copy it over onto the real root. And as such, make sure that all modes are correctly, et cetera. And that's also, that was also the first step to implementing rollback. Um, bin patches are, for single components, cumulative. So if you have, like right now, we have two patches for 4.3 that patch OpenSSH. So you can actually just install the second one if you have not installed the first one. And the second one comes out, just install the second one. It has all the changes for the first one. Um, I hope you can see that in the back. Um, basically, that's um, adding the patch. It says bin patch complete. And that's the package info for this one patch. It says comment binary patch for 001 open SH patch. And then the description that I showed earlier. Stupid thing. Okay. The rollback that I did was basically that I embedded a plist, the plist that is used to create the patch, that, that I shove along with an installer script into the package. And as such, I made sure that nobody needs any special components on his OpenBSD system to run the bin patches because the package tools allow us to define certain scripts that we run when we install a package. You can just say, hey, up on install of this package, execute this script, and the script will take over and do whatever you want. And that was my way of basically jumping on the back of the package saying, hey, yeah, I come along and I just write around on your root file system. And we use that installer script to then archive the previous contents of the root file system, those that we overwrite, under vardb bin patch in a tar file. And that's how we do the rollback, because if we do then package delete, it has again an exec line there saying, oh, okay, I have to run the installer script in deinstall mode, means I have to untar whatever I archived before. And basically rollbacking a patch is just package deleting it, which is quite nice. You just say package delete bin patch da 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 and just this kaboom it's all the way back um, the rollback does eat a bit of disk space because we archive all the contents that we overwrite but disk space is fairly cheap and even on embedded systems that we use for firewalls we recently switched to two gigabyte compact flash so even there we can run lots of bin patches before actually having problems with um, the disk space and of course, if we run out of two gigabyte of, play, of space, OpenBSD has released a lot of security issues. So. Um, there are a few turning knobs in binge patch ng. Even though um, OpenBSD does not believe in too many knobs, I try to keep them to a small amount. Signing packages is possible if you set the sign key variable in your make file. Um, you put a regular SSH key in there, and then the package is signed with git set zig, 
which was developed by Duck Song, which is a mechanism for signing gzip packages. And um, you can set master set OpenBSD for wherever you want to download stuff, or the work here. So far, any questions? Um, let me show you the rollback. I wanted to do it live because it's more fun, but um, my internet got went away earlier. So um, basically, what I did here, I added the the first patch and um, showed the MD5 of the SH daemon after I installed the first patch for this release. And then I said, well, okay, let's install the second one and um, display the MD5 again, which is then here. And then I said, ah, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to have all those security fixes. I want to go back. So I package delete the second one. So I'm back to the same MD5 as came out of the first one. And then I said, ah, screw that. I don't even want to have the first one. So I'm back to what OpenBSD installed when it came with 4.3. Bin patch master is um, what I came up with for distributing the patches. It's a lot of Perl wrapped around lots of SH calls. And what I want to do is manage bin patches, build with bin patch ng on remote machines with it. There are Perl modules for SSH, but they are really slow. If you want to try, if you try to transfer larger bin patches, some of them are up to 50 megabyte. It gets really nasty. So I just use regular SSH for that. And what bin patch master does is it first collects the patch level of all machines, basically by SSHing into the machine, running package info feeding that back to the master. And then we search the FTP site for a new bin patch to install, compare numbers, and distribute them, exclude them maybe, because there are some patches you don't need on certain machines, or you don't want them for whatever reason. And um, bin patch master is not completely done. I tried, but um, work has prevented me from actually fulfilling it. But it will be released within the next two weeks. Further steps that actually need to be done is uh, we need to add package uh, code to verify embedded signatures from gzsig to package add, which is then the first thing I actually have to add to OpenBSD core system. And I've already tried working on that. It's not really trivial because if you, what package add does, when it downloads stuff, it reads the first bytes and to verify the signature, it actually needs to read way more and then it comes it collides with our regular way we use package add. Um, me and a colleague burnt are trying to finish it, but we are not really sure what the cleanest solution to, to this problem is yet. And uh, a big thing right now is still the temp dependencies between patches. Uh, right now, you actually have to know that you ha have to install the patches in which, which order and all that. And I would really like to find a way to handle dependencies between patches so that package tools know that if you install that patch, you don't really need the previous ones and that thing. But that's not done and I have not found a very good solution to it either, but I'm thinking about it. Um, more information can be found on the following sites. Um, the first one, bin patch ng, right now only hosts the tarball and the slides. Um, I should add some more information and documentation. That will come in the next two days. Um, below that is my website, where you find some, some other stuff. And of course, OpenBSD's website. Are there any questions so far? You're a really silent crowd. Yeah, hey, Tyrell. Do you have a mic for him? Is that this one? Oh, hi, Felix. Thanks for that. I'm interested. I w I, that's what I, I'm not an expert on this, so I'm still kind of a newbie, but I do use this on my who firewall. Who is? Yeah, well. 
Uh, you know, okay, so like on, on an embedded system, like you talked about, like a two gigabyte compact flash, because this is what I'm running, I think maybe even one gigabyte. Uh, space. What's, what's the easiest way to keep track of all these rollbacks? Is there some kind of config file that's going to eventually limit how much you will keep? Because, you know, after a while, it's going to get kind of cluttered, I'm imagining. Um, after a while, you should update to a new OpenBSD version. Oh, <laughs> would be the... <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it will do that. Maybe it would... Uh, you could just... I don't know what... I'm not really sure what was the release with the most security issues, but I think we never had more than 15 in one release. So you run an OpenBSD firewall for two releases, you have to upgrade anyways. Plenty of space. However, you have a valid point, and it's something I have... I've been thinking about how to... Basically, once I have dependencies, you could actually say, okay, if I install the second OpenSSH patch, I can nuke the first rollback, like the, the very first rollback, because you're likely not going to downgrade that far. That's right, yeah. You can, of course, add a config for that, but then you would have to add the config to the OpenBSD core system again, that what I've tried to avoid so far to add anything there. So, and uh, of course, you could ship a config file with the, open, with the bin patch, but it's, um, I have not found a solution yet. But of course, yeah, you have to reduce the clutter to some point, especially if you, if you start bin patching Xenokara, because right now, um, if you patch Xenokara with bin patch ng, you actually get really big bin patches, and I'm gonna try to reduce that. Also, um, one issue right now is if you, if you build bin patches, for example, for OpenSSH, you get a lot of man pages with it. And there are a lot of machines where I don't install the man set because I don't need them there. And that's something where I've not, another point where I've not found a clean way of actually saying, okay, I want to build a bin patch, but only for stuff that comes out of base and comp, for example, or just out of base and whatever. That would be the next step. But then you end up with very, with very specialized bin patches. And with this framework, it would be nice to build it because it's very easy to build them. But beforehand, it was kind of a pain, but it's, it would be on the roadmap. Okay, thanks. And one last question. Um, when this is ready, and w where will it be announced first? Where will the news come out? Because, of course, um, I'll be waiting for it. I'd say uh, monitor the first two sites. Okay. Um, behind hazardous.org, there is somewhere a blog. Uh, you'll find it. But also uh, look at binpatchng.puffy at work.org. And uh, that's where I will stu post stuff the first. And um, there's more to come, so you should check it out regularly. Any more questions? Uh, I have another question. Uh, okay, so let's say you uh, install the bin patches for uh, 4.2. Yeah and then you upgrade your system to 4.3. Uh, what happens then? Because for example, from what I understand at the moment, if after upgrading to 4.3, you would delete those bin patches from 4.2, you would end up with, for example, SSH from 4.2. Exactly. Um, that kind of depends on how you probably update your systems. I always untar the install sets on all our machines and would then probably just completely nuke VARDB bin patch. It's an interesting point, what you actually would do with that. But if you do a rollback then, you end up with crap. So <laughs> that's a valid point. Um, yeah, as I've, as I've stated in the beginning, this is actually the first time I publicly talk about it. And I've been, I've been working on it for a while, and I've showed it to, to a few colleagues, but... Um, there will be more things like that probably popping up, but it's um, it's a start for proper pack uh, for proper patch management, something we haven't had in the last how many years? Twelve years, so something like that. Um, before um, we do other stuff, um, I'm gonna try to let me see if I can actually convince this to show how easy it is to build patches. It, I hope I have the patch file. So basically, if I would want to... What? The lights are too bright. Lights are too bright. 
I've, I'm, yeah, you can't switch putty to other way around, can you? I, n I hardly ever use it. Mm, let me see. We have we have time, so. Mm, duh. Default foreground. We want uh, black. White, on the foreground? No, the. F oh, that's no. We want foreground. Oh, let me. That way. That looks that looks there, but I I was I was called up to. Okay, so I'm really not a Windows person. So, this is uh, yay. Okay, um, so basically, if the patch flies around, yeah, well, it isn't. It tries to fetch it. Um, well, I can see if I can get internet. Oh, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> Never do live demos. <laughs> Let's see. Oh. <laughs> and that's the only reason is I cannot have mirroring on an open BSD. So. But we still have a few minutes, so we should use them. Yep. I think it doesn't like me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but this is too much Windows for me. I'm actually, don't know. Okay, anyways. Um, you should buy open these t-shirts. They're out there. <laughs> That's what we always say, and uh, we mean it. It really helps the project. And it's um, been really nice to <coughs> be here again at Confidence. So thanks to Andre, Anna. They're probably not even here, are they? Uh, running around. And the rest of the staff for creating the conference. It's really be probably the best conference to be as, as a speaker. I can really recommend it. And they should get a hand, even though they don't hear it, so give them a cheer. <laughs> Buy more shirts, CDs, and beer for me and Wim. And um, I guess say, time for beer, so.